it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm designing a layout for Bramble Fox. I'm going to be using the You and Me title from the March Fox box. I love this, it's a, a white perspective and it's open so um, you can see through the letters. So I'm going to back it with some green cardstock to match the um, collection I'm using today which is the Simple Vintage Weathered Garden collection, it's a bit of a mouthful, um, from Simple Story. So lots of like muted greens and sagey green colours. So I'm going to back it with this green cardstock so that it stands out on my page but it would also look fab on a mixed media background and you'd be able to see all your coloured mixed media up through it. Um, so lots of exciting things that you could do with this one with it being open. Um, I'm just putting some glossy accents on the back of it before sticking it to that bit of cardstock and then I'm going to pop that to one side whilst I work on the rest of my layout and that will just give that a few minutes to dry and that will make it so much easier when I come to cutting around the edge of it. I'm going to use a craft knife and just cut all around the edge and then try and get the, the middle parts as well, those negative parts. So I'm going for a really simple design today. I'm just going to fold some strips of paper over, kind of like banners, um, and stitch along the top of them um, and really lightly embellish. I'm not going to go mad. I want a kind of elegant feel to the page. Um, I'm really loving minimalistic at the moment and loads of white space on the page. just find it really helps the things that you do have on the page, like the papers, the acrylics, your embellishments, helps them really stand out when the page isn't too overcrowded. So loving going for a minimal look at the moment. So I'm cutting my papers in different lengths and widths and you can see here I'm folding them over in half um, and I'm going to arrange them on the page kind of to the left hand side. Um, I didn't want anything too central, I wanted it to one side um, which is really funny for me because I have OCD when it comes to like symmetry and patterns. So I'm really surprised with myself with scrapbooking that I can do things kind of off centre. Um, anything else, like if I've got my fireplace, for example, my mantelpiece, anything that goes on there kind of has to be centred um, and symmetrical. So if I have one thing on the left, I have to have another thing on the right. Um, but scrapbooking, it seems that those rules go out the window and I can quite happily have things um, off centre and to one side, which is useless information for you, but just something that does make me laugh a little bit about myself. So I'm picking, I think I do four or five pattern papers from the collection. That one you see the largest strip I've cut with the butterflies on. I purposely went for that as the largest strip because the colour on the background of that paper matches the colour of the shirt I'm wearing in the photo. So that was um, a strategic choice to have that as the largest piece. Um, and that's going to kind of be the main section and then I'm going to have the other little ones um, arranged on top of that and either side of it overlapping some of them um, and then like I said I'm going to stitch across the top of those with my sewing machine and I'm going to do that off camera um, well it's not off camera I do it on camera and then I cut it out because I had a massive fallout with my sewing machine and then my thread kept snapping I'm not having a good week with my machine at all um, we never really get on very well at the best of times but I've had a good run actually it's been about six months I think since I've had a really bad fallout with it um, but this week has been particularly bad so I cut that footage because it would have had you in stitches um, but I have gone back and forward a couple of times I think three times in total um, just to have that stitching detail at the top some of the strips I've gone right across the top others I've gone about an inch down I wasn't too fussy about that being particular it was more there for the texture because I love the texture that stitching brings to a layout and then just whilst I um, was doing my stitching, I've also cut around the cardstock on my perspective here and you just saw I missed the centre of the A. So I just quickly used my craft knife to cut that out. And because that glossy accent was um, sort of dried off and it had stuck really well, it was really easy to cut that cardstock with a craft knife. Um, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be quite fiddly, but it really wasn't at all. So nice simple technique for backing your perspectives there. So I've got the most part of my layout done already. This was another quite quick and simple one for me. Um, I've just added a couple of layers of paper behind my photo. I've got a layer of white, just because I've got the white perspective. There isn't a lot of white in this collection. It's more of an off-white creamy color. So I wanted to bring some more white to the page. So I've added a layer of white cardstock about the same thickness as my um, the letters on my perspective. And then I've added a layer of like a stony coloured basil cardstock behind it that does match the collection nicely. 
and then I'm going to have my photo situated on the pattern papers there I'm going to have it lined up straight rather than at an angle so that it matches those papers and then I'm going to stick my perspective down to the bottom left hand corner there I tried it out in a couple of places um, and really struggled to decide where I wanted it but in the end I settled for that bottom corner just because that that piece of pattern paper is quite large and I felt like it needed something on it so my title sat there really nicely just adding a couple of the brads from the um, Weathered Garden collection up to the top there along my stitched line. These are kind of fake brads. They haven't got the bit that you poke through the paper and split at the back. They, um, they're they just sticky brads, so they're really simple. Um, nice addition and it brings a bit of dimension as well. They're kind of 3D, um, so they're a really nice addition on the page. And then, like I said, I'm keeping my embellishments quite minimum. I don't want to go too mad. I don't want to cover up all those pattern papers. And I definitely don't want to extend the design into the white space too much more. I want to keep my embellishments on top of the paper. So I've got a nice tight design all clustered in that area. So I've cut a couple of the butterflies from one of the patterned papers. They're nice and small. And so I'm just going to add one down by my title there and the other at the top right. Got a couple of flowers here I'm fussy cutting as well from the collection. Just gonna have one of those either side of my photo as well. And I'm gonna get these stuck down with foam pads underneath them just to bring in a bit of dimension. Those papers, the pattern papers I folded over, bring in a little bit of dimension where they've got the fold. I have flattened them quite a bit um, and they will get flattened a bit more once it goes into an album, but you'll see in the close-ups the dimension they give um, and it's really lovely. I love the way this looks. And it's similar to a layout I did for Paper Maze a while back, I had like a diagonal design with folded over papers. Um, I just really love the way it looks on the page. So now I'm just going through the collection just to find a few little bits that I can bring in. So I've got a little sticker here from the sticker book that says Sweet Life. I'm just backing that onto some white cardstock so it's a bit more rigid and I'm just gonna tuck that under my photo there over on the right hand side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then next to my title down the bottom there, I felt like I needed something and I couldn't decide what. So I've pulled out a floral sticker from the sticker book to kind of make a triangle around my photo. So then I've got um, a triangle of florals. And again, I'm sticking that to white cardstock to make it a bit more rigid and sturdy. And also because I'm not 100% sold on the idea of using it yet. So by um, sticking it to the cardstock, it means it's no stick not sticky anymore. I can move it around. If you can't be bothered to do that, talcum powder is another great way to get rid of the sticky off the back of stickers. Um, just rub a bit of talcum powder on the back with your finger and then you'll be able to move it around. Um, I do toy it with the idea of this butterfly there that you can see on the left there I've got like a strip of them that I cut from one of the pattern papers. I think they're really beautiful and I will get them on a layout. Um, just today just wasn't the right layout, wasn't the right time for it. It was just too big, um, but I really do love it. So I thought I'd cut it out and just trial it down by my title in place of that flower, see how it looked didn't like it at all it was just too big and it took away from the shape of that patterned paper I wanted the kind of square or rectangle shape and by having the butterfly there you just lost that completely and it kind of changed the whole look of the page I felt so he got the heave ho and my floral sticker is back in think about layering up a few more using the die cut pack but I just felt like it was overloading the layout too much so gone back to the sticker um, and I'm going to get that stuck in place in a minute with some foam pads again. I still feel like I want to bring in a couple more bits. So I thought I'd go through my stash of perspectives. And I found a cute little, like, almost looks like a bulldog clip. Um, perspective from a month or two ago and it says you and me which matched my title perfectly and it brought in a little bit more white to the collection so I'm going to stick that on the top left there along my stitched line kind of like the clip is clipped on to the top of the papers on my stitching and I've also got a couple of metallic kind of silvery um, or crystal coloured hearts 
um, this set. I think it was called Hearts Special Edition, this set. I've had a couple of them now and you get a few little shades in there and they're just beautiful. But those two match this collection really nicely. So a lovely finishing touch to the layout. And that is me done today. So a nice kind of white crisp layout. No mixed media at all, not even any splatters, which is a bit unlike me. Um, even if I don't do mixed media, I generally have some splatters, but I've got nothing today. So a nice clean page. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and it gives you some inspiration in using your perspectives from Bramble Fox. I will pop a link in the description box below to the website itself, to the shop, to the Foxbox subscription page and also to our Bramble Fox Friends Facebook group. So do head on over and join. But thanks again for joining me. I'll leave you with the remainder of the close-ups and I'll see you next time.